Hey everybody, glad to be back. Uh, had a rough time for about a month and a half with my voice going in and out and going away, not coming back for a while. And hopefully we're on the, the up and up now. Uh, voice have been back for probably a week and a half or so and no issues. So looking forward to getting back to our videos. I apologize for having such a break in between. I know that kind of kills the momentum of what we were doing, but we're back and uh, we're gonna hit chapters five and six tonight and um or this morning and uh get things rolling for you and um hopefully every week we can get back to getting these videos out and get through this book and uh start on the next one looking forward to that all right so we're going to start in chapter five uh talks about uh i'm on some of the notes i made i'm just gonna gonna hit those rather than going you know page by page um it starts out talking about faith and um the how it only takes a little bit of faith to, to see mountains move, to, to see the things that, that God wants to do happen. Um, a lot of times I think we, we tend to think it's our faith that, that makes things happen. And because we don't believe we have enough, we don't see the hand of God move. However, it's, it, the, the faith we have in, in the Bible, they even talk about Lord increase our faith. So faith comes from him. It's, it's his faith that he gives to us, um, and it only requires a little bit. So uh, learning how to not feel like it's your responsibility to see God move and understand that it's all about him, it has nothing to do with us, that's, uh, that's what allows God to be able to move and do what he wants to do on this earth and through us. Um, one of the, the lines in here says, uh, let's see, but let no man despair. Let none of us say that we are too old. Again, it has nothing to do with our age. Uh, I know the older we get, sometimes we feel like, you know, well, I'm maybe my, my best years of ministry or my best years of, of, uh, of being a strong, powerful Christian are over. Not at all. If, if, if God's power is about God and his ability to use it, then our age means nothing, young or old. Um, doesn't matter if we're a, a child who believes or a uh, hundred year old man or woman who believes we can still see the power of God evident through us um, if we will allow God to move that way and that's something that that we have to grasp and hold on to because the next point it says that the world is not waiting for a new definition of the gospel but for a new demonstration of the power of the gospel um, I think the world we live in they want to know if something's real they want to see if it's real they're not content just to take our word for it anymore. They want to see the power of God. They want to experience that. Not that we have to perform signs and wonders for people in order for them to find God, uh, because it's the Holy Spirit who draws us. It's not our words or our actions that draws, but we have to be vessels of God that he can use. And he has always been about uh, signs and wonders following them that believe. So it's very important that, that we allow God to move through us and and understand that uh, church today can't just be um, status quo. It can't just be uh, the same every week and we show up and spend an hour there and then go home and, and come back next Sunday and nothing's changed. The, the, the church meeting needs to be a place where the power of God is evident, where his presence is so strong that it can draw people to him. Um, and that happens when we allow God to move through us, the gifts, the callings he's placed on us, when we allow those to move. Um, now there, uh, one thing I want to add here is uh, there are always people who, who want to use their gifts um, and will occasionally, because they're so eager to use those gifts, can get out of order. But we have to remember that everything that God wants done is in decency, and in order and he has set up a, a, a hierarchy of authority in the church so we have to be willing to follow that authority um, and allow God to move in that regard that way there is no confusion that way it doesn't cause problems or hurt um, you know, there may be things that the Holy Spirit is telling me that you may not be hearing and you want to stand up and and do or say something and and the Holy Spirit is saying to me not right now not right now you have to respect those times. 
Um, I'm not the kind of pastor who lords authority over anyone. I, I've, I've, I've never wanted to be that kind of person, I, and I'm not. But I also have the responsibility as a pastor to, um, to hear from God, to lead his church, to guide uh, the way he guides me, the way he speaks to me. So I want to see the gifts and callings that God's placed on his people in action in the church. But I also want to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. And he knows what's best and when the right times are to do that. So understand that there is a freedom to use those gifts, but there is also uh, an authority that God has placed that he expects us to follow so that things are always done in decency and in order, which will allow those on the outside, those who are, uh, who are unsaved or sinners, that they can see that this is a God thing and not a human thing. That's very, very important in the church. And, uh, and I think there have been churches and places that, that get, out of, get out of line there. And, and it causes more harm than good, for sure. Uh, another section here says, To save our faces, we modify God's commands and so lose our faces. In the world we live in now, we hear tolerance preached so much at us. Uh, and I don't mean from the church, but of course it's in the church too. But society says, you've got to be tolerant of me. You've got to be tolerant of what I believe and how I feel. And, and although we don't want to offend or hurt people by any means, we want to do everything in love, we can't uh, water down the word of God. We can't um, say, well, you know, because culture is different now, then maybe we should change what the Word of God says. We can't do that. The Word of God is what it is. It is what it's always been. It is truth. It is God's Word. It's God's way of doing things. We have to uphold that. Um, I had some good friends one time explain to me that uh, they were having a conversation with someone who uh, was living a certain kind of lifestyle, and that person was like, well, well what is, what's your opinion of my lifestyle? And they said to this person, my opinion doesn't matter. The only opinion that matters is God's opinion. And I thought, what a, what a beautiful way to not come across as offensive or to pit them against you, but to say that all that matters is what God thinks. So, and that, that can keep you out of a lot of arguments. Now there are people who will argue and say, well, the Bible's not for today or whatever reason, whatever excuse they've got. Don't argue with people like that. If, if they want to argue, if they want to fuss about what the Word of God says, just let it go. Let God deal with them. You can't convince somebody that they are uh, believing something wrong. Only the Holy Spirit can do that. If God has prepared them, then they will be receptive to, to what God's speaking to you to give them. If they're not receptive, understand that it's okay to back off. Let them know you love them. You're there for them. Uh, you'll always be there to listen. You're praying for them. But don't argue. Don't fuss. Don't fight. Um, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't do anything to help the situation. We have to be loving at all times. But again, loving doesn't mean we have to accept everything. It doesn't mean we have to agree with everything. Accept the Word of God. That we have to stand on. We don't have a choice there. Um. He's talking about in Ezekiel where he's commanding the, the bones to live. And I love this story because I liken it to discipleship. Um, he starts at one level and at the very end says, live. He's built them up. He's taken the, those bones through steps. Bone come together, uh, uh, bone uh, to bone. Um, each, each part come to its own part, the, the, those kind of things. It, it, it builds on, it's not just a, a clump of bones and suddenly says live. No, he tells, it takes it through steps and processes to get them to where they can live. And to me, that's what discipleship should look like in the church. We ought to help people who are, who are newly saved or, or who are immature in the faith. No matter how long they've been saved, maybe they haven't ever been taught. Maybe they haven't been discipled. That's our job is to help lead them through those processes so that they can then stand on their own and live. Take it step by step to get there. That's a very important thing that 
I think a lot of times in our churches we miss out on. And there are honestly certain denominations that do very, very well with that. But um, in the past, some of the more charismatic uh, denominations haven't done so well with that. Um, we've been all about the hype, all about the excitement, um, but we, we don't build the foundation. And, and that's, that's a sad place to be. It really is. And we've got to do much better. I'm going to jump to chapter 6. Um, just a couple of things in this chapter. He, he says, he asks the question, why does revival tarry? And then he begins to list off some things. He says, number one, because of the cheapening of the gospel. Again, that's something we can't do. We can't cheapen the gospel. It is what it is. We've got to stand on the word of God. Um, revival tarry is because of carelessness. Um, we, we can't be careless with, um, with what God has called us to do as Christians. We, we can't just be flipping about it. We have to be intentional about sharing the gospel, the good news with people around us, people we work with, people we come in contact with. Um, revival Terry is because we lack urgency in prayer. This is a biggie, I feel like. We, we don't pray like we, like we ought to. We don't spend time with God the way we should. And also, we don't pray for people with that urgency, knowing that, that he's coming soon. Time is running out. There are people dying and going to hell every day. And we ought to be urgent in our prayers for, for those people, for God to use us at however he can so that we can reach them before it's too late. And the last thing says, revival tarries because we steal the glory that belongs to God. I never want to be a pastor or a church that steals God's glory. I don't ever want church to become about um, listen to the kind of the wonderful music we play or the way we play it or how great of a speaker I am, or anything like that. that. The Bible says that no flesh will glory in his presence, which means if there is flesh that is glorying, his presence isn't there. And without the presence of God, we'll never see the Great Commission fulfilled. We'll never see people come to Jesus. And that's what our goal is. So as we close out this, this session, um, focus on... Focus on believing God for the things that he said that we can do, for walking in the faith that he gives us, for, um, for not being careless with his word, for holding true to the word of God, for being urgent in our prayers, for, for praying for opportunities for God to use us, because it's very important as time is running out. That revival that we talk about in this book, revival, why does revival, Terry? Revival has to start in us has to start here. If it doesn't start in us, you can't expect it to start in a church. You can't expect it to start uh, in your friends and family. It has to start in you. So be prayerful and mindful of that. I love you guys, and I'm looking forward to finishing up this book with you guys, going through the next chapters next week. Please comment. If you have any questions, place them there. We'll talk about those, answer them next week. But uh, I love you, and thank you for following along on this journey with us.